2.2, the derivatives of polynomial functions. So we're going to look at all sorts of different little rules for polynomial functions. They're all pretty basic. Um, it gets a little more difficult when we have to find equations of tangents. And at the end of this lesson, I'm going to do probably the hardest question you'll see in this section about finding um, the equations of a tangent to a point that's not on the curve. So hang in to the end. Make sure you can do that one as well. So we start with um, the derivative of a constant. So in the lesson that we did on curve sketching, I explained why the derivative of a constant is zero. And that is because the slope of a line whose equation is equal to a constant is zero. So whether it's y equals two, as in here, slope is zero, y equals pi, which is just a constant, e is another constant value, 2.71828, and y equals k, where k is just a constant, the slope of all of these is simply zero. The power rule, also mentioned a little earlier, but now written with an equation for you, says that if x y equals x to the n, then y prime, remember that's just your derivative, is n times x to the n minus one. In other words, all I'm doing is bringing the n forward and subtracting one from its exponent. So if I have y equals x to the fourth, then y prime is simply 4x cubed. Or let's say I have y equals x to the twelfth, then I would say y prime equals 12x to the 11. So you can see how powerful that is. You wouldn't want to do from first principles uh, something like x to the twelfth. That would be pretty difficult. Okay, the constant multiple rule. It says if f at x is k times g at x, then the derivative f prime x is k times the derivative of g at x. <coughs> so if I have f at x equals 3x to the fifth, you're not going to write it out like this, okay? So you're not going to say f at x equals 3 times 5x to the fourth. You're going to think about this in your head, and all you have to do is simply multiply 3 times 5 and reduce it by 1. So it's just 15x to the fourth. So <clears throat> even though this is actually what you're doing, you don't have to think, you don't need this step, right? So for this one, for instance, f prime x, I do four times three halves. So that's six x and I reduce, there's lots of fractions. You have to get sharp with your dealing with fractions. So three halves minus two halves is one half. So 6x to the half. And because this equation started with um, a rational exponent, I can just leave it like that. If it started with a radical, you should convert this back to radical form when you're done. The sum rule, the difference rule, they're all just saying that if I have things that are added together, I can take the derivative of each of them separately. Or if I'm subtracting, I can take the derivative of them separately. So let's take a look at this one here. So we have a fifth x to the fifth. So I do five times a fifth, that's just one. So I have x to the five minus one is four. Three times a third is one. x to the three minus one is two. And I'm just gonna go along here, a half times two is one. x reduced it by one, and the derivative of a constant is zero. So don't, don't make, don't make a derivative of this one, just leave it alone. So there you go, you're done. When you have things that have radicals, it's a good idea if you write them out with their exponents first. So x cubed, the root of x cubed, remember the little two here, that's your um, denominator of your fraction. So this is x to the three halves and the root of two, doesn't matter, it's a constant. When I take the derivative of that, it's going to be zero. So I don't have to write it as two to the half power. Okay, now I write y prime and I have one half x, a half minus two halves is minus one half. And I have six times three halves. So that goes nine x to the one half and the derivative of the root of two, again, it's a constant, it's zero. So I can write this as one 
over 2 square root x. Okay, so this was a negative exponent. It's not very clear. It was minus. Minus, no, it looks like a plus. I was just trying to get this out of the way. So it's negative 1 half. So that's the square root of x. To make it positive, I put it in the denominator. And this is 9 times the square root of x. There you go. <clears throat> and finally, um, for this little first part, what I want to do is rewrite this so that um, later on you're going to use what we call the quotient rule. But right now, you can just write this as 1 over x plus root x over x. And you can simplify this, right? Oh, I didn't leave much room for this one. Okay, so this is, I'm going to go over here. Okay, sorry. Way over here. Boop. So this is x. <coughs> Excuse me. So 1 over x is x to the minus 1. And root x, that's x to the half. x to the half divided by x. So 1 half minus 2 halves is minus a half, right? So this is going to be x to the minus a half. That's before I take the derivative. All I've done is simplify this so that I can take the derivative more easily. I've got everything with a power. So x to the minus 1 and x to the minus 1 half. So now I take the derivative. So I say y prime and I do negative 1. So negative x to the negative 2 and plus times minus a half is minus one half x to the minus three halves. Now, because the question started in radical form, I'm going to get rid of the negative exponents and I'm going to write it properly. So negative x to the minus two is minus one over x squared, All right? Put this in the denominator and this is minus, so this has to go into the denominator. So I have minus 1 over 2. Remember the exponent belongs to this x. So I'm bringing the x to the denominator and it's the square root cubed. So square root cubed. So some of those are a little bit tricky. Okay, let's turn the page here. Write an equation of the tangent to the curve at a given point. A big deal in calculus is writing tangents. Find the equation of the tan tangent. And then this time it's asking you in standard form. Your textbook likes to use that. Um, I don't think it's totally necessary, but if that's what you're asked for, that's what you give them. Okay, so to find the equation of a tangent, I need a point and a slope. Just like finding the equation of any line, right? I need point and slope. So, they said when x is 4, well, that's not a point. It's the x value, but I need a point, so I need the coordinates of a point. So 4, and I want to know what f at 4 is. f at 4 equals 4 times 4 cubed minus 3 times the square root of 4. So what's 4? Four? 4 to the power 4, that's 256, and 2 times minus 3 is minus 6, and I get 250. So my point is 250. 4, 250. So how do I find the slope? Well, I know that if I take the derivative, I'm finding the slope function. Hmm, okay, let's do that. f prime x, what's the derivative of this? So 4 times 3, 12x squared, minus 3 times the root of x. Oh, I probably should have written that like this first. Minus 3x to the half, right? Maybe you could have put that in before you started the derivative. So now I do minus 3 times a half. So that's minus 3 halves x to the minus 1 half. So x to the minus 1 half, I'm going to put that in the denominator. So 12x squared minus 3 over 2 times the square root of x. Okay, so there's my derivative and I want to know what is the slope when x is 4. So I'm going to say f prime at 4. So the derivative when x is 4. Now plug that in. 
So I get 4 squared is 16 times 12 is 192 minus, I put in 4 here, that square root of 4 is 2 times 2 is 4, so minus 3 quarters. So 192, I need that in quarters, so 4 times 2 is 8, uh, 36, 3, 4, 7, 68 over 4 minus 3 over 4 and I get 765 over 4. Okay, that's my slope. Ooh, sorry, I just moved everything. That's okay, we'll just slide up here and turn my light a little bit. Okay, so I have the slope and I have the um, a point. So I have a point and a slope, and now I can find the equation of the tangent line. So we're going to use y equals mx plus b. So what is my y? My y is 250, so that's my point. I'm using x and y, and my slope, 765 over 4 times my point x coordinate is 4, and I'm solving for b. So this divides into that one, and I get 250 minus 765. So B is negative 515. So then that gives me Y is equal to my slope was 765 over 4 M X plus B, so minus 515. Now, if you want it in standard form, you're going to have to do something with this now to get it in standard form, right? Because it's not. This is y equals mx plus b form. So in standard form, there are no denominators. So I would say 4y is equal to 765x minus, uh, it's 2060. And now you write it in ax plus by plus c equals zero format. So that gives me 765x, I bring the y over, minus 4y, minus 2060 equals zero. And there you go. That is the equation in standard form. Okay, so some basic exponents. Um, remember, uh, if I have something like this, the cube root of x to the fifth, that's the same thing as x to the 5 over 3. Just a little reminder for you. This is the denominator. This is the numerator of your rational exponent. If I have f at x equals 1 over x squared, I can write that as x to the negative 2. Right? Before I take the derivative. I'm not going to take the derivative of these ones. So that would be easy. Right? I just want to make sure you can simplify some of these. And this one... You can rewrite this as t to the fourth over t squared minus 5t squared over 2t, right? Obviously, because if I had something like 4 minus 1 over 3, all over 3, you could say, oh, that's the same as 4 thirds minus 1 third. So that's all I'm doing here is breaking these up, and then you can simplify them. So this would be the same as, well, the t's, this would become 3. So 1 half t cubed, and this would be 5 halves t. And then it's really easy for you to take the derivative after that. Okay, so let's move on to two more questions. <coughs> Did I just have two? Where's the really hard one? Oh yeah, it's over here. Okay, two more questions. This one, find the equation of the tangent to the curve at the point 1 and minus 1. Okay, anytime you see tangent, you think point and slope. Slope you get from the derivative at that point. Okay, so I need to find the derivative. They gave me the point, so they said at 1 minus 1. If they had said where an x is 1, then you would just plug in 1 here and you would get the negative 1, the y coordinate. What is the slope? What is the slope of this? Ooh, it's messy, isn't it? Okay, so let's let's um, rewrite this. First of all, it's x to the half minus 2 over x to the, the threes in here, so that's the one-third power. So now you have to deal with some fractions because I need to, 
I'm going to break these into two parts, right? x to the one half, one half over x to the one third minus two over x to the one third. Okay, so I want all these in the numerator so I can take the, deriv uh, the derivative more easily. So what's a half minus a third? Well, that's three six minus two six. So one sixth, that's my exponent for this one. So this is going to be x to the one sixth minus, well, this one doesn't have any x's, so it's going to be two x to the minus one third. Remember, if you bring this to the numerator, it becomes negative. Okay, so now it's set up to take the derivative. So y prime, one sixth x, one sixth minus six six is minus five six. And minus two times minus one third is going to be plus two thirds x to the minus one third minus three thirds. Make sure you're going the right way each time the minus four thirds. OK, so I want to know what is the slope at this point. So I want to know what is the slope when x equals one. So y prime and a nice format for this, you write y prime and then you go when x equals 1, so you kind of drop it down here, equals, because we can't just say f at 1, because it's not in function format. Okay, so when x is 1, so, well, 1 to the minus 5, 6, anything to, 1 to any power is still 1, so I get 1 6, and 1 to this power is still 1, so I get a 6 plus 2 thirds. So that's 1 6 plus 4. 4, 6 equals 5, 6. Okay, so I've got the slope and a point. So I'm going to write my slope over here. I didn't ask for standard form this time, so I'm not going to do it because I don't like to. How's that for a reason? So I'm going to use my y equals mx plus b. I know it. I love it. And I put in the point because I have to solve for b. So minus 1 equals 5, 6 times 1 plus b. So 1, 6 minus 5, 6. So that's minus 6 over 6 minus 5 over 6. I'm really doing it the long way, aren't I? Minus 11 over 6 equals b. So y equals slope. And there's your b. And you're done. You could put it in standard form. That would be easy. Let's multiply by y. 5, sorry, by y, by 6. 6 times 6 times 6. And then 5x minus 6y minus 11 equals 0. There's your standard form. I did it. What a happy face. You're so smart. Oop, was I off the page? I'm sorry. Okay, so the last question I want to do for you is a tricky one. That you're going to see this is number I think it's 17 in your book it's one that teachers love at least I used to it says determine the equations of the tangents to the curve that pass through and they give two points two three and they give another point two minus seven so what you have to recognize here is that this point two three two three here is not on the function so I sketched this function for you so that you could see um, what we're dealing with here. So 2x squared plus 3 is this function. Here's the point. So I can draw two tangent lines from this point to the curve. One that goes right through here. And you should note if this is the point 0, 3 and this is a point 2, 3, that means that this has 0 slope and that this is the line y equals 3. Okay, but you also have another one. And that's the tangent that would go here and touch this curve way up here. So similarly, if you're doing the, the second question here, let me get a longer ruler. If you're doing this point 2 and minus 7, you can see that I could have a tangent here and I could also have another tangent that would go through and touch the problem way up there somewhere. So that's why it says determine the equations of the tangents that pass through 2, 3. Okay, so once you've seen this once, you're going to be able to do it every, every time. 
So let the point of tangency, so let's this point here or this one up here, we'll call them A. So there's some value A and its Y coordinate is going to be 2A squared plus 3. All I did was plug that in here, right? 2A squared plus 3. So I have A and 2A squared plus 3. But what is the slope? How do I find the slope? The slope is going to be rise, so 2a squared plus 3 minus 3 over the run, which is a minus 2. So I'm using this point here, 2, 3. So this is my new point, this, and I'm using 2, 3, and I'm just finding the slope between these two. And what is that equal to? Well, we, it, we know that the derivative of y prime here, derivative of y, y prime would be 4x, but I'm using a, if I plugged in a here, that would tell me the slope is 4a. In other words, if I said, what is the slope at 2? You'd say 8. What is the slope at negative 5? You'd say negative 20. What's the slope at a? You would say 4a. So I can set this equal to 4a and then solve for a. Now it looks a little difficult, but it's not. It's simply just a quadratic. So I have 2a squared plus 3 minus 3. So on this side I have 2a squared. And I'm going to multiply both sides by a minus 2. So if I do a minus 2 here, that gets rid of that one. And I do a minus 2 on this side. So I get 2a squared is equal to 4a squared minus 8. Bring this to the other side, set it to 0. So 4a squared minus 2a squared would be 2a squared minus 8 equals 0. And if I wanted to factor that now, 2a squared minus 8, that would be the same thing as a squared minus 4 equals 0, isn't it? If I divide everything by 2, so that gives me a plus 2, a minus 2 equals 0. I did boo-boo somewhere. 2a squared minus 8. Find my mistake here. Uh, 2a squared plus 3 minus 3. I divided the minus 2s and I get 4a squared or minus 8a. Oh, Miss Havrod. I knew it was a little silly mistake because I knew that one of my answers had to be 0, a slope of 0. Okay. That makes so much more sense. You can tell I don't edit my videos. My daughter said, Mom, why don't you edit your videos? And I said, because it takes me so long to do each one. I don't have time to edit. 2a squared minus 8a equals 0. Pull out a 2a, and I would have a minus 4 equals 0. Yay, yay, yay. So I get a is equal to 0, and a is equal to 4. So that's this one here, right? We got that one. And the other one, I have a is 4. So if a is 4, if a equals 4, then the slope equals, we said slope was 4a. 4 times 4 is 16. Okay, so all that, and now I have, um, I have everything I need to find the equation of the... Um, equation of the tangent line. Okay, so there you go. Um, I hope that helps and you can do it again with 2 and minus 7. So um, yeah, so when a is 4, you would have to find the, um, the equation of the tangent still. Um, I think you can do that on your own and make sure you try it with this one as well. Thanks for watching.